Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming. And welcome to a new Let's Play, Let's Play RPG Maker MV. Now that may sound a little weird. RPG Maker, isn't that a program? That's not a video game. Well, it is. And let me tell you this. If you've watched my channel before at all, you'll know that I love role-playing games. I think they're great. Um, and RPG Maker is neat in that it is a program that can let almost anyone make their own RPG. So if you've kind of always wanted to make an RPG, this is the game for you. I want you to call it a game the tool for you. So RPG Maker is a very, very fast, easy to use tool that you can use to make RPGs that have a base style to them, a very 16-bit type of style. Now, if you're really in-depth, you can use it to do a lot more than that. But for a basic user like me, that's what you can do. I've spent some time off-screen learning some basics for RPG Maker and thinking about making my own quick game, and I figured let's make the game here on YouTube and see how it turns out. Um, so, first things first. This is RPG Maker. The first thing we want to do is we're going to start a new project. And it's going to ask us what we want to call this project. We'll call this project uh, uh, RPG Maker LP. And we'll call the game title, this will be Grug's Revenge. Because that's a great, I mean, why not? Why not? All right, and it's going to put it in my documents folder. So I'm going to say OK. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to copy a bunch of base data uh, that it needs to make the game for us to use uh, into a project folder that we're going to be able to use to begin our creation. Now, with any RPG, you have to have an idea of the story you're going to tell. And I didn't want to make a big giant thing. I'm not a master RPG maker. This is really, um, aside from using the RPG maker that came out on PlayStation 1 uh, years ago to make a very simple, simple game, uh, I've never really used RPG maker except to play around with it a little bit here. So, I don't want to go too crazy, too big. We're going to make a pretty basic game. But it's going to be fun, in my opinion. So, what kind of game are we going to make? Well, Grug's Revenge, I just sat down and I typed out some basic, basic things. You get to see how the sausage is made here a little bit, because I have no way to capture this except to do a whole screen capture. So, uh, Grugtar's Revenge, I went ahead and made a little outline of what's going to happen. So, I was thinking for our game, just to lay it out, there are some bad guys that are going to show up. They're going to kill off our family, Grug's family. It says it's going to be a dark game, just to warn you. Uh, they're going to kill our wife and steal our kid. We're going to have to go hunt them down. We're going to find out that they were slavers that took our kid. Uh, that they went, went uh, sold him across the sea. That we need a boat. We're going to talk to a guy at a port about how to get a boat. He's going to tell us if we can kill the slavers. That uh, he'll give us a boat to go across the sea. So we'll go kill the slavers. Then we'll uh, get the boat, go across the sea, get to a port city that's at a mountain pass, be told that the people who stole, the people who would buy our kid live across the mountain pass in a castle. Uh, to get across the mountain pass, we'll have to kill a monster that's blocking the pass. Then we'll go to the village right before the castle. We'll find out that there's bad magical experiments, and then we'll come up to the end where we'll find out it's too late and we'll have a big end to our revenge story. So that's kind of a base layout I kind of did just for for a story of our game. I like this little part at the end. You walk off into the sunset a broken man. What will become of you? That'll be our cliffhanger. So when we're rich and famous and this game gets a thousand sequels, this is where it all began. So this is kind of the base layout for the story of our game. It's pretty uh, pretty basic. Why can I not expand this window? There we go. Uh, it's pretty basic, and it's just going to give us a very basic game. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to talk about the game itself. So, this is RPG Maker, and this section right here is where we can create our maps. So, I want you to think about this. Most RPGs that you've played, your character walks around in an area, and when he goes to a different area, we're going to consider that transitioning a map. So, you're going to hear me talk about different maps that are listed over here on the left-hand side. We're going to fill those maps with tiles. In the tiles, for example, this is an overworld map, 
we have different types of tiles that give us different looks and uh, different types of cities and features and just all kinds of stuff you can think of that we can put on this map from a visual perspective. These tiles have some special uh, features to them too. If we take a look at this as well, uh, and we look at the, oh, that's not what I want. Uh, oh, that is what I want. Sorry. Uh, we look at the tile sets here. Oh, no. Now you get to laugh at me because I can't remember where it's at. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's up here. If I look at, and ignore all this, we'll talk about all this in a bit. Don't worry, we'll get there. If I look at the tile sets, so here are the, the tiles that we can put on our map for outdoors. And you'll see that some of these tiles you can't walk over. They have an X, so they block passage. And other ones allow you to walk over them. So we can dictate where the player can move on the map by what kind of tile we put there. So, first things first. Let's design our overworld. Every good, every good RPG starts with a big overworld. So, let's go ahead and look at what we have here. We want to go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. This is too small. So, let's go ahead and edit this map, map 1. And we're going to call this Overworld Start. And this is going to be the map where we start out the overworld. So what we're going to do is in this edit screen, we're going to increase the size. Let's. How big is a 25 by 25? What, that, what does that look like? That's a lot bigger. That's a lot more manageable. That doesn't quite look like a square. I don't know why that doesn't look like a square. Oh, because it's uh Ah, that's why, okay. This is square zero. Oh, that's square twenty-four, never mind. So that should be twenty-four, twenty-four, okay. It just doesn't look super square to me. But so here we have the size of our overworld map. Now we kind of looked at our layout of what's gonna be happening, so we know already that we're gonna need a continent a sea that we have to cross and another continent. So why don't we make this kind of easy? Why don't we make, grab this section right here. This is some ocean tile. Why don't we cover the whole place in ocean to start? Boom. There we go. If we zoom in, you can see it's pretty big. But here we go. You can see that the ocean covers this whole area. We can't walk where the ocean is. So what we can do is we can grab this tile, which is some grass. And let's put a continent over here. Let's make it a little irregular. You know, irregular continents kind of, they look cool. There we go. So there's our first continent uh, right here. Let's, uh, let's extend this top up a bit. So there's continent number one, and we're gonna need continent number two. And actually, I feel like we need to go a little bit longer on this map. So let's edit this map again. Uh, let's extend our width to 35. There we go. And same thing, I want to go ahead and I'm going to cover this in ocean. That's just going to give us more room to work with. So, we can have a slightly bigger continent on this side than what we were looking at originally. as I cough all of a sudden and get an extremely dry throat. Sorry about that, folks. Um, and then with this continent, again, a little bit of irregularity, probably best. And then over here, we'll put a second continent. Let's do it as like a little, a little island continent over here. These continents look a little too perfect, but whatever. I'm fine with that. So we have two continents. Uh, let's, uh... Let's let's cut that one away a bit. So now we have two continents on our in our game. So the first thing is we're going to have to you know go ahead and set these up for our big story. So the first thing is we're going to have a house where our hero lives and we're going to put that on the first continent. Man, these continents are still way too small. We're going bigger. We're going bigger, folks. You can tell how much I did not practice this. All right, that looks better. 
you know what? I like this a lot better. We're going to go that big. So that is... Where are we at here? 37 deep. Yeah, so 64 by 38. Just to make that simple, how about 65 by uh, 35? All right, there we go. That's a lot better. Woo! See how easy that is to change on the fly as well? So now we can make an even bigger continent over here. Let's just make a big square, and we're going to have another continent that's going to be offset. And now we're going to take this tool... And we're going to round off these edges here. Switch over so we're not drawing blocks. So we're actually just taking out little sections. Let's have a little inlet here in this continent. That kind of cuts in and makes a little lake. Get rid of these perfect corners. Have this kind of jut in. You know, again, no continent has perfect square corners. That doesn't seem right. How about a lake that goes in the center here? Like that. And then maybe there's a... I mean, sorry, a river. And then maybe there's a big lake here in the middle. That'd be cool. I kind of like the lake like this. And I kind of think the lake should have a little extra section to it that kind of juts off. There we go. Square lakes are okay. I mean, this is a an RPG after all. And then what if there was a bay right here? Where it kind of jutted in a bit. Had a little peninsula that stuck out. Yeah, that looks a lot better for our starting continent. And our secondary continent... Eh, we'll mess around with this in a second. But again, let's just cut off these these perfect corners just to make them look a little little more ragged and in fact I think there's gonna be a little bit of this this is gonna come up here yeah I like that a little indent and then there's gonna be just another river over here and it, it actually branches it off there's two little lake with a little river section that looks cool and then okay that looks perfect so those are our two continents so we've got to start so now, let's go back to this. So we're going to have to have a house where we start, right? Where the hero starts out. So for that, we're going to go to this next section. We were using A, which has these mountains and everything else. And we're going to go to this next section, which has some, some buildings, as you can see on it. And if we check here, we have some more buildings. I kind of want to look for something that looks like a hut. Maybe a little house. Maybe our hero, Grug... Uh, was a, uh, we'll say he was a carpenter, uh, out in the woods. There we go. There's a little house. How about this guy right here? I like this little dude. So he lived up here. Actually, he was a fisherman and he lived up here in the corner of our map in this tiny little house. Let's zoom in so we can see what it actually will look like in game. So here's the house where Grug lived. There's even a little palm tree there. He lived on the beach. It was great. So here's the house where Grug lives. And then we said that what's going to happen is Grug's going to have to leave. And he's going to have to find out that he has to cross the sea. Right? So I think that when Grug leaves his house, he's going to find he's going to leave his house and he's going to head to the big town. And the big town on our map will be located over here. Okay, so we'll put a big town over here. Why don't we put this, this big town right here, kind of the same. Ah, you know what? I don't like, I don't like this deserty looking houses. Not a big fan of those, actually. So instead of that, let's use this little guy. There we go. He lives on a little house on a hill. I like that a little bit better. Because that means we can use, oh, what if he's a farmer? Oh, that's even better. We'll put him in a little farmhouse. Okay. The whole fisherman story is gone. He's just a farmer that lives up here. So what we'll do then is we need to put a city over here. So we can select these two dials together to give us two sections. And I'm going to put a city over here. And this is going to be a port city. And this is where we're going to go for our first city to find out what we need to do. Um, to find out we have to cross the ocean. So that's step number one. So step number two, we need to go ahead and set up where our, where the slavers are going to be that we're going to have to go fight. So for that, 
We're going to say the slavers. Oh, where do the slavers live? So what kind of building do we think they live in? Uh, how about if the slavers have a little compound? Uh, I kind of like... You know, we're not talking a big castle or anything like that. Do, they, do we want them to live in a cave? Yeah, let's have them live in a cave. So the slavers, we're going to say live in an old abandoned cave down here to the south. So we'll kind of put them right here. Actually, we'll put it right here. And that way the player can see it from over here. And he'll know that he has to travel all the way around this river. Give us a reason to make him walk all the way around and go into this cave. So that's our first section right here. The second section we talked about was what was going to happen on this side of the map. Well, over here, we're going to again... He's going to arrive at a city and then have to go through a mountain pass. And from that mountain pass, uh, beyond there is where the castle is. So, the first thing we're going to do is let's make some mountains over here. And we'll fill this in in a moment. But let's put some mountains that you can't pass over on this side of the map. So let's, let's put some mountains over here like this. And how about some other mountains over here like this. And then we'll like... Fill this section in so it's all mountainy. Everyone loves mountains. I just love the word mountainy. I think that's a great word. So we'll fill all this in. There we go. And again, this is a mountain pass. So we're going to make it so you can only get through a tiny little section to get in here. So some mountains over here. Some mountains over here. And we'll get rid of these mountains right here here so we should have a pathway the player can walk through that looks good to me so with that in mind there's going to be a village at one end of this mountain path pass uh, so we'll put a little oh what looks like a mountain pass village to you and me here I like this guy right here this little guy right here is going to be our village at the beginning of the mountain pass and then this guy right here. Uh, anything else? Ah, how about this little little village here? Little rundown kind of farming place. We'll be right here. Like that. And then we'll go back. We'll put in some mountains right here. And we'll get rid of this section of mountains. So that way you have to walk through the mountain pass to get to here. The player has to walk along. Then, of course, we need the castle where the evil people live. This looks like an evil cat. Ooh, let's use this. This Oh, this rundown castle looks kind of neat. I kind of like that. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's use this rundown castle. So we'll make the evil people live right here. And, of course, we want to fill in this because, again, you don't want to have perfect... Nothing should look perfect. There we go. So, we have our basic layout. <clears throat> our player is going to be able to start here, go to this first village, find out that he has to go here to kill somebody. Then he'll get a boat. We'll cross the ocean. Enter this village. Find out that we have to go across this mountain pass to this village. And then to the castle. So that's the basic layout for our game. Now again, this part looks real bland, so does this, so the last the last touch for this map will be that number one, this cave should be among some mountains, right? Like there should be some mountains over here, maybe, I'll let's zoom in a bit, let's zoom in a little bit more, there we go, I don't like those, maybe there should be some mountains like this over here, like we have in the other section. Like some big, hefty mountain range, and it kind of curves in on itself. Oh, not too much. You won't be able to get through there. There we go. Uh, and there's it kind of comes down here, and there's a little section here, and like that. And then this entrance, we'll use that one, is right there. Oh, that looks, that looks kind of like garbage, but that'll be okay. Um, if you are good with Photoshop, you can actually export this game into Photoshop, use Photoshop to touch it up, make it real pretty. All kinds of really cool options you can do. 
So, we've got our cave here. But this whole area looks real bland. I mean, this looks really bland. There's not much going on. There's not much happening here. It's just these mountains. So let's add in a couple other things just to make this look a little more, a little better. So let's grab some forest. Why don't we have some, like, a, a forest that surrounds our, our character's home that he'll have to walk out of, like that. Why don't we add a uh, some mountain, a little mountain range. It's, oh, not that one. That's what we want. That's what we want. Little hills here that he can walk across on the way. Uh, it's kind of like a little hilly section. Why don't we grab uh, this type of tree for down here? You know, fill this in as well. Give us a little forest. Maybe there's a little mangrove forest across the uh, the edge of the the water here. Let's also grab some dead trees. Let's put some dead forest down south of where this cave is why don't we have some darker grass you, you see this a lot oh i don't know if i like that border there how about this and eh, i don't like this border that i'm getting at all oh our little lake went away that's okay we can fix it rug can fix it there we go our lake is fine um, that's what I want. This one right here, right? Yeah, so we can put in some, like, darker plains areas out here. You see this a lot in RPG maps, where, like, they'll just be, like, darker sections of the grass to give it a dynamic look to the map itself. Maybe to delineate uh, a difference in the vegetation. Um, some games it'll have a, a plane effect where it'll dictate what kind of monsters you fight, maybe. Uh, I don't know how much of that will do here, but we'll kind of map this out a bit. And why don't we have it just kind of zoom around down here. And then on this side, I want to do kind of the similar thing. So we'll put uh, we'll just fill this in with a bunch of forest. Up here. We'll put some more generic forest down here. So again, we don't really care about these sections. And then we'll put some grass in here. And we'll kind of have it come down this way. And there we go. So... Our game now has a very basic overworld map. We have a basic layout of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places that we'll be visiting on this map for our game. And that's going to be the very beginning. So that's where we're going to end this first episode. Where we created our overworld map. And when we come back, we will go ahead and we will create our main character, Grugtar. So... We'll be doing that in the next episode of Gaming with Grug. I want to say thanks for watching. Please tell your friends. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe on the channel. And as always, we hope to see you soon.